What happened? Oh. But what kind of bombing is that? Don't tell me you saw those steers from way up there. That's funny. Nobody in the schools had a better record than this cadet. No question of his not knowing how to operate an S-1 site. But wait a minute. How about the site? No wonder. The cross-trail knob moved the pointers all right, but it wasn't displacing the optics. No reason for cussing out the site or the maintenance crew, though. He should have caught that in his pre-flight inspection. There it is, fifth down on the list, along with the other eight points to check before the takeoff. What about your pre-flight inspection, Mac? Did you slip up on checking to see if that cross-trail knob was OK? Maybe only once in a thousand times could a thing like that happen, but that once would be enough. A hole in the ground without any Japs in it is only a hole in the ground. Hence the bombardier's pre-flight inspection of the S-1. It's brief and very much to the point. But before we go over it, let's make sure the site is in the condition it should be when the bombardier receives it. Vertical gyro should be caged, that is, lever up. Vertical gyro motor switched off. All switches and levers are off when they're up. Next, azimuth gyro unclutched. Lever up. Constant speed motor switch off. Azimuth rate knob in detent. All right, now let's get those nine points firmly in our minds. Vertical gyro, number one. Constant speed motor. That's number two. Warning and release contact. Direction system. Cross trail. You ought to remember that one. PDI. Okay. Now back to zero. Leveling system. Reticle light. And voltage and frequency. That's the last, number nine. Now let's hit them once more. One. Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. Eight. Nine. Nine things to check. Think you know them? Are you sure? Well, let's check a cadet making his first actual pre-flight inspection of the S-1. Number one is easy enough. He listens to make sure the vertical gyro is running up to speed. If he can't hear it, he can always feel it through his fingertips. To test the constant speed motor, he moves his optics as far forward as possible with the range sweep knob. Then he turns the ground speed rate knob forward. The optics are moving smoothly. Okay for that. And at the same time, he can check his release and warning systems by simply letting the optics continue to drive down. Only he must check the signals with a high-low knob in both positions. Okay, next comes the erection system. First, he uncages the gyro. With the plane on the ground, the optic should drift to the rear. Notice after this check, he cages the gyro. Now for the cross trail check. First, he sets the drift angle to about 20 degrees. Then he sets in an extreme value of trail, turns the cross trail knob back and forth. Finally, he looks through the eyepiece to see that the optics are displaced from side to side. Yes, that's right. He does not forget to check the cross trail pointer, too. For the next one, checking the PDI, You'll need a little help. First he turns on the motor switch. Then takes the azimuth rate knob out of detent. The helper watches the PDI while the azimuth rate knob is turned. Clockwise for a right signal. Counterclockwise for a left signal. PDI OK. But you must make the same check for the one-to-one -one system. Search switch pushed in. And then use the azimuth displacement knob for both right and left signals. OK. Now for the reticle light. First, in the daylight, you must cover up the front window. Then he turns on the rheostat. In checking the voltage and frequency, he asks the pilot or crew chief to rev up the engines. Frequency should be between 385 and 410. Voltage between 115 and 118. All set. Or did he forget anything? Well, how about it? That's right. He skipped number seven. He forgot to check the leveling system. Well, it's easy enough to check. Clutch in the azimuth gyro. And if the drift dial doesn't move, the leveling system is OK. Yes, that's all and pretty simple. But any one point can be fatal if you forget it. Got them down, Pat. Let's see. One, vertical gyro. Two, constant speed motor. Three, you name it. Name the rest yourself. Four, five, 
six. Seven. Eight. And nine. 